In previous videos, we've set up a list of features that we want to have in a project or product, our so-called product backlog. In this case, this consists of user stories, this agile and scrum way of defining product features. And we've also set up a task board in a previous video that is our way of organizing the work that has to be done within a given sprint within a given increment of work. So here in this video, I'm going to show how do you take your user stories from your product backlog in the issues tab and decide which of those goes into a particular sprint, how you place them on the sprint task board and how you actually divide up user stories into the sub units of work that need to be done to achieve them. So let's imagine I'm starting sprint one. I'm having a planning meeting with my team. We're getting together. What are we going to work on? this sprint, I would come to my project task board here. I would add cards. I can go through all the user stories. If I'm seeing more than just user stories, because at some point you might have more kinds of issues in this list than just user stories, you can always search for label colon and then in quotes, user story. Any label that has a space in it needs to be in quotes. All right, so then you see all your user stories. Now it's up to you and your team to discuss each of these user stories and figure out which ones you wanna start. But let's just say I grab the first one here and I place it in the sprint backlog. That's an indication that this is a user story that we intend to work on in this particular sprint, sprint one. Let's take another one, throw it in without even looking. All right, we're gonna say we're gonna work on these two. But of course your team would talk about these and figure out which ones you actually wanted to work on and place them in this user stories column, the sprint backlog. So that is now the list of features in this product or project that we intend to work on in sprint one. At that point, you start to think, well, what is really involved in each of these user stories that we've picked? In other words, what are the units of work that need to be done to achieve these? So my user story in the top here is as a burgeoning software engineer, I want to understand how to plan a sprint so I can work effectively in an agile way. All right, so how do we achieve that? How do we as developers make this happen? There are gonna be subunits of work called tasks, and subunits of work called spikes for each of these user stories. So let's start with this first one. We as developers, in this case, content producers or code developers, we're going to figure out what is the work we need to do to accommodate this user story. So let's think about it. What do I need to do? I'll add a little note in the to-do list that is one of the things we need to do to make this happen. I need to prepare a lesson plan. I need to record a video of using GitHub to prepare a task board for a sprint. I need to record a video of using GitHub to put user stories and tasks onto the task board. This video right here. And I need to make sure all videos are compressed in audio so that it's easy to hear me and published with good search engine optimization on YouTube. There are some other technical things I need to do that are not really related to this one user story, not really related to this one user story, but just general things I need to do for this project, such as learn how to record a video on the Mac. If you don't know how to do that, you've got to figure that out. Uh, learn how to speak and enunciate your words clearly so other people can understand you. This is something that every public speaker has to figure out. Most people think they should figure that out. Maybe that's not true. But anyway, that's uh, internal work that I'm gonna have to do on my own, not related to achieving any of these user stories, but just things internally I've gotta do. These are what we're gonna be calling spikes. These are not particularly related to any one user story. There's general requirements of making this project work. These things are all tied to that first user story. The next thing we'll see is that in GitHub, every issue, Every issue in this issues list, including the user stories we've dragged into this board, has a number. I'm gonna reference that number, number five, for that first user story, in all of the tasks that are related to it, the tasks that together achieve that user story. How do I do that? I can, for each of the tasks that are necessary to achieve that user story, I can click to convert them to full issues. At this point, they're just cards. Here I'm converting to regular issues. They will now appear under the issues tab if I had clicked that. Let me now click on that title that has now become a link and you'll see a little preview of it over here. And I'm gonna label this what it is. It's not a user story, this is a task. I'll make a new label with a nice color and go to the next one. Let's do this one as well, convert to issue. We can click on it now and we can assign a label, task label is the one that I want. All of the tasks that are corresponding to that first user story have the label task 
associated with them. Furthermore, I want to associate each of these to the user story from which it came. So it's easy for me to cross-reference. GitHub doesn't have a very sophisticated way of doing this, but I'm going to edit the um, description of this particular task and say related to user story number five. And notice that GitHub actually recognizes the number five is the ID number of this user story in the first place in the sprint backlog, that number five user story. So you can click on that or just finish typing and it will actually provide a link to that user story when I update that issue. Let me click to update the comment and you'll see related to user story number five, if I cover over it, you can see a little preview of the story and it's easy for you now to, to remember, oh, that's related to that user story. I'll do that for each of these tasks that I've put in here. We've labeled the tasks with the task label, which now shows up. We have these cards, which are spikes. These are not directly related to any given user story. I'm gonna label these as such. Convert to an issue, click on it, under the label, call it a spike. Pick a nice color, save. Go to the next one, click on the dot dot, convert to issue, and click on the title, go and label it spike. And now we've got all of our tasks labeled as task, all of our spikes labeled as spike, and we are in business to start planning our project. These labels seem to not show up sometimes. This one has been labeled as spike. If I just reload the page, you'll see that it has been properly labeled. I'm not sure why GitHub isn't showing that right away. Now I'm ready, and I've got all the tasks and spikes necessary to achieve these two user stories. Let's just say that's what we've decided are the tasks and spikes. Now we can start to work on some. So at this point, what you would be ready to do is to assign each of these to a member of your team. Everything on the task board should have somebody responsible, somebody accountable for getting it done. So let's say we just start from the top, record a video about spikes. I'm going to click on that and assign it to somebody. There's somebody who has to be to blame when this doesn't get done. There's somebody who has to be congratulated when this gets done. So I'm gonna click on, in this case, the only member of my team is me, so I'm gonna click on me. I'm gonna do that for each of these. Everything on this task board should have somebody clearly responsible for doing it. You never wanna have tasks that are just sitting around, not assigned. You can always switch assignments. You can have your team members trade assignments. So somebody who was assigned a task one day can give it to someone else if they want the next day. Uh, but you at least wanna have an initial starting point of who's supposed to be doing what, so we know who's doing their work and who's not doing their work. Anybody should be able to peer into the process, stakeholders, developers, managers, and be able to figure out who's doing what and have they gotten it done. At this point, the team members are ready to start working on these tasks and spikes that are listed in the to-do column. Each developer would look at the tasks or spikes assigned to them, pick whichever one they wanted to work on first, drag it into the in process column and start to work on it. They would write the code and do whatever production necessary to complete that task. And once they were thinking it was in good shape and ready to be finished, they would move it into the awaiting review column where all the other teammates would see, here's a task or here's a spike that's waiting for us to look at it, give it our blessing and move it into the done column. So another teammate would come see this task or spike in this column, look at the code, look at the production, look at whatever was done to satisfy this task and talk with the developer who did it and make sure that they both agree that this is satisfactory. And if so, move it into the done column. For any task or spike in the done column, GitHub Issues has a feature where you can officially close that issue and that would mark it as being complete and not of concern anymore. You see the icon next to the issue has changed. That developer would then go and choose another task, whatever next task they feel like doing in this list that's assigned to them, work on it, get it done. When they think it's in good shape, move it into the awaiting review column. And again, another developer and they would discuss the other developer would do what's called a peer review, check out what's been done, and give the blessing to move it into the done column or not. If it's not given the blessing, the other developer thinks more work is necessary, it would go back into the end process and that developer who's been assigned to it would continue to work on it until both they and the other team member reviewing it agree it's been done satisfactorily, at which case it's again moved into the done column and that issue can be closed in GitHub.